Inventory turn rates. Now this is an important sheet to set up because your sales dashboard, your weekly dashboard and competitive dashboards are gonna pull some data from here to understand how much inventory you had starting out certain years. So don't neglect this sheet even though you can get the data elsewhere. This is very important for feeding back through to other pieces of the spreadsheet. Now the way it's set up, it's just very simple. We're looking at weekly turn rates on the left, monthly turn rates on the right. You can get a pretty good idea of uh, how your business should be doing. Now again, this is just this this whole spreadsheet is just a uh, two dozen of my sources, but it's fairly accurate. My overall turn rate is about 12 to 15 percent a month. Some months it's higher. Obviously, textbook season, so we're looking at August and January are going to be some pretty good numbers. Uh, in the summer, kind of the doldrums, so usually April through June, a little bit slower. Not as many people are buying books. Um, also, that tends to be the case in like March and April as well. So you can see some of these higher single digit numbers where I'm not selling as much of my inventory. A weekly rate, typically anywhere from 2.5% to 4% is fairly normal. Every once in a while, you'll see some lower numbers. And again, during textbook season, you can expect to see some higher numbers. Sometimes, maybe if you're fortunate, maybe even a double-digit weekly rate. Now, if you're selling other inventory other than books, your turn rates are probably much higher. And uh, again, you can get a nice, clean picture of what's going on. So the way it works, again, if it's green, you can, you can change the data. My spreadsheet set up to start in uh, January of 15, and I've got the week set up here because this is just the first week with any data, so I didn't want to have too much that was uh, showing poorly. Now what you can do, we've got a turn rate here of zero, which may be skewing our results just a little bit. So what we can do is we can actually go to the next week when I have a first registered sale, and we could change this. We're gonna put the total inventory, we're gonna say starting out with 110, because that's how much we listed this week, and then we're gonna change the date here to be 115. Now what this does, is it's gonna fill down and go on a weekly basis from here, and now it knows what our total inventory was, and we, we can avoid that zero week, which may hurt the rates. We have enough data here, actually, that getting rid of one zero didn't actually change the average turn rate, um, at least from a significant figure perspective that we can see. So it didn't really do a whole lot, but if it helps you sleep better at night, go for it. Um, the other piece you can use this for is if you've started your spreadsheet from scratch and you've got all your data from when you originally listed it, you should never put anything up in the starting inventory. Now, if for some reason, let's say we started this on 122, 15, and let's say, let's go back to having a starting inventory of zero. Here's what you gotta watch out for. In this case, it didn't know how much inventory we had. We had sold a handful of units off of zero inventory, so we have a negative turn rate. That's not really possible in real life. So what we wanna do is if this is true for you, you're gonna to wanna to try and go back and figure out, even if you can't get an exact number, roughly how much inventory you had to start with and kind of plug those in until you get some numbers that make a little bit more sense. So in a perfect world, you'll go back, you'll have all the data, you won't have to use the starting inventory number, but if you don't have it and you got some negative turn rates early, that's something you can go back and possibly fix. So I'll go back to what we did before, 115, and I believe it was 110 to get started. All right, so we're off and running. Monthly turn rates work the exact same way. You can, again, probably go back and put the first month that you have, and this goes on for several years, so you should never have to add anything. And what we're doing is we're tracking what your new inventory is that month, how much total inventory you have now, so in this case, 301, sold units, how many you sold, anything you've disposed. And the way turn rate is calculated is that it takes the average of the number of inventory you had at the month's end, so in this case, we had 301 minus 37. We're looking at somewhere around 275, give or take. Uh, actually, it's gonna be about 264, if I did my math right in my head. So the inventory at the end of the month is gonna be 264. The end of last month was zero, so we're gonna take an average of those two numbers, which you can see down here is 132. So 37 divided by 132 should give us a 28% return rate, which it does, or turn rate. So turn rate is always gonna be, um, the first month it's gonna look a little funky because we have an average of zero from the month before. So when we average out what we had at the end of this month, it may be a little overstated, but moving forward, it's gonna give you a really good, accurate representation. So we'll see the amount of inventory we had at the end of May. In this case, it's actually gonna be exactly 800 versus what we had at the end of uh, June. We listed 1,000 items. We had 1,800 minus 130. We're looking at about 1,700 over 800. Our average inventory is gonna be somewhere in between those. So uh, don't make me do math on the fly, but basically we're gonna be looking at about uh, 1,250, give or take. So 130 divided by 1,250 is pretty much right at 10%. 
So that's how it's calculated. That's how we calculate turn rate everywhere else throughout the spreadsheet. But again, keep in mind, make sure you just update this. Make sure you got a good starting date that reflects when your business started or when you've got metrics that are going and make sure you've got starting inventory that, that correlates with that as well. And uh, the spreadsheet will work beautifully moving forward.